This is KGW News at 11. What a show, what a night. Fireworks lighting up the sky from coast to coast on this 4th of July. This was the view here from the 43rd annual Macy's Extravaganza in New York City tonight. Back here at home, the largest fireworks display in the Northwest just wrapped up at Fort Vancouver. KGW's own Maggie Vespa hosted the event for us tonight. She joins us live from Vancouver. How'd it go tonight, Maggie? Oh, Dan, it was spectacular. Per the name, the 2019 Vancouver Fireworks Spectacular. It's been going for 56 years, so more than half a century of tradition here at Fort Vancouver. And organizers promised that this show tonight would be bigger, it would be better, and man, they did not disappoint. Take a look. So unbelievably cool. This show lasted pretty much exactly 20 minutes by our count. It was very well produced down to the second. It started with the national anthem. It included hits from Frank Sinatra, Katy Perry, Miley Cyrus. God Bless the USA was a huge crowd pleaser per usual. It's put on in part and sponsored by Columbia Credit Union, the Historic Trust, and other agencies again here at Fort Vancouver, the historic Fort Vancouver. Every year, tens of thousands of people turn up here. Last year, the attendance dipped a bit to, due to a number of issues and uh, the Historic Trust was very open about the fact they had a couple of budget issues. They took away the food carts among some of the results. So la attendance last year was 25,000, and that's a lower number compared to most years when it's closer to 35 or 40,000. This year, we don't have a count as to how many people showed up to see this show, but the field filled up pretty quickly around 9 o'clock, and again, the fireworks started at 10, and it was just packed with people who were excited, who were cheering. Once Rod Hill and I stepped up here, people were started cheering, just thinking that the show might start a little bit early and we had to tell them like hey no again it's starting at 10 but we're so excited that you're excited so once again back out here live behind me I mean you would never know that anything just happened here this is completely cleared out people bolted out of here um, as soon as it happened if you have family headed home from the show or if you're out and about right now in the Vancouver area or planning to be know that there might be a bit of a traffic issue because there was a mass exodus as you can tell but people were walking by our stage here up in front and kept saying man that was such a fantastic show so the consensus that we got very unscientific polling was that tonight again did not disappoint it was indeed spectacular. Don't be humble. Dan, back to you. Don't be humble. Maybe they were cheering for you and Rod when you guys got up there, not for the anticipation of fireworks. You can say it. I'm not going to say it, but you, you can say it. That's fine. <laughs> 56 years running, they know what they're doing. Maggie Vespa, thank you so much. This is a little different here. This is in the city of Lake Oswego. They put on a slightly different display tonight. They used lasers instead of fireworks, and it was it was pretty cool. I was kind of anxious to see exactly what it would look like, but from the visuals you see here, not bad at all. The show held at Millennium Plaza Park. It offered kind of an alternative to what you know they typical fireworks show. Organizers say it was cleaner, a little safer than the normal thing, and less disturbing to some people. We didn't want the usual boom, boom, bang, bang, and bunch of smoke and all that, so. Uh, she found this and I, I lit up right away and was happy and I think that our kids will enjoy it better. I think it's better for the environment and the younger generations love it. So there were still fireworks uh, in the area. This was uh, this event, the laser show, was separate from the private fireworks display that was still shot off over Oswego Lake. Now, aside from the professional displays tonight, you're probably likely to hear some booms and bangs around your neighborhood as you do every 4th of July. We've had several reports though of brush fires started by fireworks. We always talk about safety. No major incidents so far tonight, which is good. Still, 911 dispatchers are very busy, so they're asking you do not call unless it is an actual emergency. Don't call them to report illegal fireworks, not 911, not the non-emergency line, nothing. Dispatchers in Multnomah County usually get about 1,000 calls about illegal fireworks on the 4th of July and it actually just gets too overwhelming for them. The city says it just doesn't have the resources to respond to those calls. Now call volume about illegal fireworks, not the only thing tying up dispatchers this week. If you can believe it, more than 100 people from around the country have been calling Portland's non-emergency line. The reason they want to complain about last weekend's downtown protest. 
KGW's Catherine Cook joins us now. She has some of the audio from these calls, which is kind of unbelievable to me. Wait until you listen to it. And the reaction from the city. Catherine? Yeah, Dan, they're really frustrated. Not because of callers' opinions about Antifa or police. It's because they're keeping local callers with real emergencies from getting through. Since the June 29th clash between Antifa and conservative demonstrators, countless people have weighed Shouldn't in the citizens from the of, national of media to those posting online. Then a funny thing happened. Non-emergency, can I help you? As first reported by the Willamette Week, people from all over the world began calling Portland's non-emergency line to sound off. Dispatchers got an earful from people like this guy. Yeah, your motto says sworn to protect, dedicated to serve. Who the f do you serve, you piece of sh**? Hey, thank you. Huh? You what? liberal Antifa piece what? of sh**? And there's just, there's just no cause for that kind of language. Dan Douthit with Portland's Bureau of Emergency Management says more than 100 people have called from as far away as Australia and all over the U.S. That uh, reporter that they're showing on Fox News that got beat up out there by all them people in that protest. Uh-huh. That last person they show and that man that hit him, hit him with brass knuckles. Where are you calling from? I'm in Georgia. <laughs> okay. Any one of those calls just takes away time where someone could be calling in with either an urgent life safety issue or to report something going on in Portland. Douthat says even though they're calling the non-emergency line, they're getting the same dispatchers who respond to 911 calls. They just have a longer wait time. Doubt that figures someone somewhere posted the non-emergency number and encouraged people to call it and complain. Non-emergency. You yeah. guys ought to be ashamed of yourself. You ought to be ashamed of yourself letting people protest and getting hurt. Oh, uh, that's actually for the police, not the dispatch center. We're different bureaus. If you want to matter. Instead of calling non-emergency, doubt that says people should go online and submit complaints to the city's independent police review division and let dispatchers Hello, this is non -emergency. How can I do their job. If you want to file your own complaint about last weekend's protest or anything police related, you can as well. And we've made it easy by posting a link to the independent police review page. Just head to KGW.com. Dan. It's all right to have a complaint. Just file it in the right place. Catherine, thank you. Just into the newsroom, a favorite restaurant near the Oregon coast caught fire tonight. This is Otis Cafe. It's near Lincoln City. See some of the video here, the pictures rather. The fire started in the kitchen. It did some extensive damage to the building. Firefighters say, as you could probably imagine from what you're seeing here, it's going to be a while till it opens again. Investigators will be out tomorrow to try and figure out exactly what started this fire. Now we're getting a closer look tonight at some of the damage from today's 6.4 magnitude earthquake in Southern California. In stores and homes, uh, produce, products, everything tumbling off the shelves here. You've seen some of the video. The shaking also cracked down some of the middle of a few rows. This is pretty, look at that, that's impressive there. The earthquake was centered near Searles Valley, which is right between LA and Las Vegas. And this is the strongest earthquake to hit Southern California in 20 years, since 1999. KGW's Morgan Romero talked to some Oregonians who happened to be down there when it hit. People from Los Angeles to all the way to Phoenix were jumping on social media after the earthquake in Ridgecrest, right near the epicenter of the quake. People were taking to Facebook, to Twitter, to Snapchat and Instagram, posting videos of stores and their homes post quake. You can see in this person's home in particular, a mess right here. That's a TV shattered on their ground. The next one showing a mess inside somebody's kitchen. You can see off in the distance fruit scattered all over the floor. They've got trash coming out of their trash cans and stuff coming off cupboards. This next video, same house as well. That's their pantry and they've also got some dishes that fell out as well. Cleaning supplies right there. This next video from that first person's home, a mirror shattered on the ground. So you can clearly see the mess that this earthquake caused in people's homes right near the epicenter of that quake. I can't imagine what they felt closer. Jessica Gonzalez and her family are from Tillamook, Oregon. They're vacationing in Anaheim right now, visiting Disneyland and Universal Studios. In their hotel room this morning, they experienced a different kind of ride. It felt to me like I was sort of being rocked, like, so, like if, you know, a mom rocks her baby back and forth, something sort of like that, more like rolling, not like jolting. And like I wasn't sitting there with her head being, you know, jolted back and forth. It was very soft. But big enough she could see the curtains and light fixtures swaying. Gonzalez says it lasted about 30 seconds. By the time she realized what was going on, it was over. My husband has experienced a couple, but um, I had never. 
So it was a little eerie. And then afterwards you're sitting there like, is something else going to happen? And I was taking pictures of my grandkids in uh, 4th of July parade. Janet Leake is from Corvallis and is visiting family in Orange County. And my legs just started to wobble. <laughs> and I thought, if, I didn't know if there was something wrong with me. But then after, you know, it seemed like a long time, I realized it was the ground was moving. And it's Her daughter Nikki says some people didn't even feel it. We were starting in a parade, so there was kind of chaos anyways. Mm -hmm. And so people were kind of like, did you, did you know we had an earthquake? In the minutes and hours following, large aftershocks rattled the region from L.A. to Vegas. And scientists expect more to come. The Southern California Earthquake Center said the quake was felt over such a widespread area because it was only about five to six miles deep. Within 30 minutes before this one, scientists say magnitude 2.5 and 4.0 tremblers were recorded in the same area. On Twitter, veteran seismologist Lucy Jones said bigger ones last longer. You feel the fault producing energy plus reverberations. If you feel it is a rolling motion, you know it's pretty far away. In the city of Ridgecrest near the epicenter, Kern County Fire Department said they were responding to at least two dozen incidents from medical emergencies to fires. This is an isolated enough location that uh, that's going to have greatly reduced the damage. This is the strongest quake to hit Southern California in two decades. Magnitude 7.1 hectare mine earthquake happened 20 years ago. But Jones says there is a 1 in 20 chance there could be a bigger one coming. Morgan Romero, KGW News. Still to come, a diverse celebration of America at Troutdale's Blue Lake Park. And there are a lot of nations here and they respect and love each other. I love this one too. Yeah, we visit some of the groups out enjoying this 4th of July. Plus, meet one of the service dogs helping a local vet deal with the PTSD flashbacks that can come with 4th of July celebrations. I'm Matt Safino. We have plenty of fireworks over downtown Portland as well from the Willamette River. Beautiful day today. Temperatures around 80, really nice, but there is a change on the way. There's even some rain up to the north. Find out if that'll make its way into Oregon this weekend.